In the last video we remade all the characters except Arpu for some reason, I forgot about him. But this week we're going to tackle AI vehicles and I've been putting AI off for some time because honestly it's probably the hardest part of remaking this game. You have complicated vehicle physics, AI need to drive to where they're supposed to, a traffic system with cars that stop for red lights, not to mention optimization, you can't just spawn hundreds of cars into a game, it'll slow it down so you have to optimize everything. So lots of complicated systems to make in this episode, but if we can add AI, we're going to add so much life to this world, but it's not going to be easy. Hello and welcome back to Springfield. So I want to just change some more post-processing things. People said the shadows are too dark and I totally agree. I just don't really, I didn't really know how to fix it, but I actually figured out there's a skylight intensity that's on one you basically can't see in the shadows at all and on four you can very clearly see in the shadows so it lowers the amount of contrast between the light and the shadows also the cartoony cell shading is still in the project i just had it turned off for the last episode okay so i want to add the ai vehicles to the game but before we do that we have to add street lights to the game and i know what you're thinking why would we have to add street lights to the game the ai don't need light to see where they're going well let me show you you can see here in the editor I'm pulling about 35 frames per second and this is much lower than the real game. The real game will have a much higher FPS but here in the editor the FPS is slower. But check this out, I'm going to turn all the street lights on. Let's go ahead and turn them on and see what they look like. They look pretty good but notice my FPS literally just halved. What the hell is wrong with you? This is because our streetlights need optimized. That way we can add the streetlights and keep our FPS nice and high. But how are we going to optimize the streetlights? Well, notice how my FPS halved when we turned on all of the streetlights. Well, what if we just turn on streetlights that your player is standing near? That way we can keep the FPS nice and high and have the streetlights. But how are we going to do that? Well, the way I've decided to do it is using these boxes. Now, I know what you're thinking, Ruben, this is a box, all right? What's that going to do? Well... I've wrapped these boxes around the level, and these are basically zones. You can see there's just a bunch of zones that I've placed around the map. That way we can just turn the street lights on for the zone the player's in, and it'll save heaps of FPS. I'm in this zone, so the street lights are on, but there's a huge problem. First of all, I can see that there's street lights over there that are not on, but then when I enter that zone, you can see the new street lights turn on and the old ones turn off. We should never see that happen, right? So the problem is that when you change between zones, it's very obvious what's going on here. So how do we fix that problem? The answer is actually really simple. And the way that we do it is this zone here, for example, if you're in this zone, we'll simply activate the neighboring zones. So basically, not only turn on the zone, but turn on the neighboring zones as well. And that way you'll never see a pop happen ever. All right, so I'm going to jump into the game here and you can see now this problem does not happen anymore. Because this zone over here is a neighbor to this zone, it's automatically turned on. If I run into this zone, it doesn't matter, right? Because the zone I was just in is a neighbor of this new zone, so it stays activated. All right, so check it out. I am now over here and you can see that the lights in this zone are activated, but the lights back at the Simpsons house are deactivated because they're no longer in that zone. You can see that only the zone I'm in and the neighboring zones have their lights turned on. Oh, check this out. This is so cool. So I can actually take Homer and move him around and you can actually see the lights update as I move him around the map. That is so cool. So you can see this is working. Oh, go away light. So good. Let's move him back over there. Check it out. Move him over here. The lights turn on in that area. Very satisfying. The next thing you need to do is order a $600 Simpsons Lego set off Amazon, guys. This is absolutely essential. You cannot remake Hit and Run without doing this. I haven't played with Lego since I was like 12, and honestly, I forgot how fun Lego is, man. I want to finish this house, but we should probably get back to the game. <laughs> okay, before we do vehicle AI, one more thing. You remember in episode 2 how I did the pedestrian system? Well, it's the same as these street lights. We only want to spawn pedestrians near where the player is. Just to show you this in action, here we're getting about 60 FPS. I'm going to hit play and spawn pedestrians into the entire world. 
10 FPS. Thanks to my new zone system, this now works. Watch this. Here are my pedestrians walking down the street, and as I go to a faraway zone where Homer is not, you will not see any pedestrians. So just to show you this actually working, let's move Homer out of this zone, and you'll see that all of the pedestrians despawn, because Homer's not in this zone anymore, he's in this zone, and if we go over here, all the pedestrians are now spawning over in Homer's current zone. So cool. I don't know if you guys remember this, but in the original game, if you hit someone with your car, they don't actually ragdoll, they sort of do this, like, ridiculous flail. So I think I'm going to keep that in the remake. Doof. <laughs> thousand years later <laughs> I think I'm gonna pass out the pedestrians if they just walk into your car <laughs> they go flying <laughs> oh dude so I went to fix that bug and I did I did something way cooler check this out so instead of NPCs walking into your car and ragdolling if you block their path, they should now avoid your car. They'll just path around it. Ah, oh, I love, I love this. That's so cool. Boing. Oh, what? Oh, and also, if you knock a streetlight over, look, he's going to walk around it. These NPCs are too smart, dude. These AI are going to take over the world and form Skynet. Uh, we still have one really major thing that we have to do before we can do the AI vehicles. AI vehicles need to know where they're going, and we sort of need to like input all of that data, kind of like with the footpaths that the AI walk down. They need to be pulling that data from somewhere. So how are we going to do that? Luckily Sam was able to add a place roads and place paths button, and these are incredible. So it actually reads over the original game files, and pulls out all of the locations of the roads and paths and then spawns them in. The coolest thing about Sam's tool, I mean aside from the fact that it saves me countless hours, is that all of these roads are perfectly mapped as they were in the original game. So what you're seeing here is the exact roads that the AI used in the original game, the exact footpaths that the pedestrians followed in the original game, exactly as they were in 2003, now here in this Unreal Engine project 19 years later. We also learnt some really interesting things like the pedestrians for example, don't walk down this entire footpath, like if you watch a pedestrian in the original hit and run, they will never walk to the end of the footpath, they actually only stay on these little segments here, you can see this is one little segment, and then there'll be different pedestrians that walk on this part of the footpath, but they'll never walk down the whole thing, which is kind of strange. The roads are really interesting too, in fact there's a few things like this road here for example, there's this weird shortcut road, and I think this is what the AI use in missions and stuff, they can sometimes choose to use this shortcut road. So now we basically just have to write a vehicle system that moves the vehicles along the roads, when they get to an intersection, pick a new road to go to. It sounds simple, but I really have a feeling it's not going to be. Okay, so I've added some really basic car prototypes to the level. And they look pretty hilarious. Basically how these cars work is when they hit an intersection, the intersection tells them what road to go to next. So you can see when they hit this intersection, the intersection says, hey, you need to go to this road now. And if they were driving on this road, the intersection would instead say, hey, you need to go to this road. And so I'm just getting the basic logic for them set up. Basically teaching them how to follow roads. And I'm doing that first, and then we can make them into proper, more complex vehicles later on. I find if you start small and chunk things, it's easier to make games. Alright, let's follow these cars and make sure that they do the logic correctly. So when they hit this intersection, the intersection should tell them to go to this road here. And it does. Very nice. Alright, let's see if this one does it. 
All right, so the movement's not perfect by any means, but at least the system in general seems to be working, right? The cars hit the intersection, the intersection tells them to go to the next road, and they go to the next road. I'll see you guys tomorrow, and we'll work on these vehicles some more. All right, so all I've done is I've added these models from the original game, and I also added some code to give the cars a random color. And you can already see, like, I haven't changed the system at all. I just changed the art, and it looks a lot better already. Our game's feeling really alive. Like, I know the cars are not ready by any stretch of the imagination, but the game's certainly feeling a lot different now than when there was no NPCs at all. Oh, dude, when you zoom out, this is so cool. So right now, the vehicles are basically like train carriages. They're attached to the road itself. Now it's going to get hard because we need to convert them to actual cars, which means we have to manually steer them to keep them on the road. They're not attached to the road. All right, so this is the part that I'm really going to have a hard time with, and that's converting the vehicles over to be actual vehicles. You can see now the, the wheels are turning. They're using proper vehicle physics. <laughs> I'm trying to get the cars to turn, and uh, it seems like they just turn forever. They just never think that they get onto the road. Oh boy, here we go. This is why I was avoiding this for so long. As the car drives out, it needs to turn, but it doesn't seem to turn urgently enough. It's only when it's like over here. Alright, so I think I found the problem. If I lower these values, it'll make the car steer more urgently. Yes! Go! Go, you stupid vehicle! Look, he's steering! Oh my god. Is he gonna make this intersection, though? Come on. I believe in you. Don't let me down. Oh my god! Oh! <laughs> you beauty! He, he looks like he's really drunk. Like, that's how my AI vehicles look. They look really wasted. But he's doing it. He's driving. Alright, so I'm about to go to bed, but I just wanted to show you guys. I got some more of the art in the game. So we have the iconic Buzz Cola glass truck in the game. We have the hatchback. The sports car I've already shown you. We have the OJ Simpson murder truck here. What is this called? The Ford Bronco. You could run to the Quickie Mart, but why not just stand on a truck and let him take you? So Sam was actually telling me you could do this car surfing in the original game. I thought this was a cool feature of my remake. But apparently... There you go. You can ride cars in the original game. And it even plays an animation if you're riding a car. I played this game so much and I never knew that you could ride cars in the original game. And I certainly didn't know it played a special animation. Here's the animation from the original game. Let's see if we can make this work. All right, let's see if this works. I'm getting what the player is standing on, and then if it's a vehicle that's moving faster than 200, we should play a car surf. All right, I haven't even tried this yet. Let's see if it works. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's sick. There's the car surfing. Game development is so satisfying. Like, just adding little features like this is like... It's really, really satisfying. Like, I get a lot of dopamine out of this. The other thing that I still haven't done for any of the vehicles is upscale their textures. So I'm going to go ahead and run these textures through the AI upscaler. As you can see, a lot of the textures on these old cars are super grainy. All right, so I'm going to re-import the SUV texture. Actually a pretty nice improvement. I'm not going to lie, it looks pretty good. Next up, the sports car. I feel like the wheels are going to improve a lot. Yeah, you can see how much more sharp the wheels got. We do have the Plow King as well. I haven't added that as a vehicle in the game yet. But this is the original one, so this is not a remake. The pickup truck. Wow. Man. Probably my favorite of the original vehicles, the glass truck. Let's go ahead and re-import that. Oh, my goodness, did you guys see the Buzz Cola logo? That got so much sharper. Upscaling is very underrated. Very impressed by upscaling. The hatchback. 
Man, those wheels got a lot sharper. Well, there you go. That's all the vehicles upscaled, so they should look a bit better until I can get some proper remastered vehicles. One thing the cars actually do not have yet is collision avoidance. So if a car is stopped in front of them, they'll just bang into each other, so they don't actually slow down for each other yet. I might add that next, actually. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add something called a service and I'm going to call the service collision check. Basically what it's going to do is every sort of half second or so the car's going to check if anything's in front of them and that way we can slow it down if need be. Alright so I'm visualizing the collision check here that the cars do and you can see that if I walk into the path of a car you can see that it basically shows a little dot where it's hitting me right. So now the cars essentially have vision. And all we actually have to do is make the car break if it detects an object. There you go. So now cars will no longer hit the player or each other. And cars will only stop if a player or another vehicle gets in their way. So any other objects like street lamps falling over, they won't stop for those. They'll just push them out of the way. I feel like a really cool thing to get done before the end of this episode is to get working traffic lights. So I think the traffic lights in Hit and Run basically just control the traffic for the looks. It's not really a functionality thing. And yeah, let's try and get the traffic lights changing state. Here's the traffic light and here's the code that actually drives the traffic light. It basically just changes the traffic light from red to green. This part here is a little more complicated because you have to turn it orange before it goes red. Let's check it out. Okay, so right now cars do not actually follow the traffic signal, but you can see that it does go to orange, and then it goes to red, and then it should go back to green. There we go. Alright, so we're here in the project, and I appear to have got the traffic lights working. The only issue is the trucks and cars and stuff, they stop very hastily, <laughs> but that's alright. I'll, uh, I'll keep working on things. Let's go make sure they actually start when the light goes green. There you go. I actually finished this last night, but I was so over it. By the time I had finished coding these, I was exhausted. It was really frustrating to code. And when I was talking about it, I just sounded like depressed. <laughs> I was like, I can't put that in the video. Guys, I'm so excited that we have the vehicles in and the traffic lights are working as well. I'm very, very excited with the progress that we've made in this episode. I really didn't think that we were going to be able to do this. I, I really didn't even know if the vehicles were going to be possible at all. So I'm so happy that we've done them. But if you'll excuse me, I do have a Simpsons Lego set to go build. So I'll see you later. Bye.